Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seve. Today we're going to be doing another free motion quilting tutorial using stencils. Today we're using a border assortment with three different options, but I'm going to show you how you can make it four when you are working on it at home. And it's I've got a new pounce pad today, so I'm going to show you how to fill it as well. We've gone over it before and I always talk through it, but I'm going to show you how to do it here today. So as always, everything you need to do this is available over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Whenever you see a project you wanna give a go, if you get the supplies from us, that helps support us, helps us bring you new free video tutorials every week. Let's get started. All right, so when you're filling this for the first time, you're just gonna pop that top off. It's kind of like a bang topper from when you were a little kid. And I'm gonna go ahead and move my fabric out of the way because I do, even though the chalk comes off really easily, I really don't wanna get it all over my fabric. So I'm just gonna open a little corner and if you have a funnel, that can be really helpful here. But I just want a little corner open so that I can kind of control how much chalk comes out. And I'm just going to fill this up to the brim. All right, that's pretty good. Got a little bit of chalk in different places. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of sweep that into the center and then I'm gonna place this topper back over like that. Now I'm gonna bang this with my plastic applicator on the bottom 50 times, like you're mad at somebody, like you are serious, you're taking out your aggression here. So 50 times against a hard surface. All right, if you were just refilling, like you've used this before, that would be plenty. But because this is the first time, we've got to repeat that whole process one more time to make sure that we've got enough chalk saturating that pad. So just fill it all the way up to the top one more time. So you can see that there's still quite a bit left. Uh, when they demo with this, they will use one entire pack of chalk over three days of constantly using this at quilt shows. So it really lasts a really long time, but you can get refills. Uh, the one thing you wanna know is that if you get a blue chalk one, you always have to use blue chalk in that applicator. If you wanna switch to pink or an ultimate white, you're gonna wanna pick an applicator just for that because once you use it with one color, you need to stick with that color for the life of that particular pounce pad. So my favorites are the ones that we carry, the blue, the pink, and the ultimate white. All right, so I'm gonna bang this 50 more times and we're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna open that up and I can actually tell, you can see it's saturated really well on one side, but not so much on the other. So I'm gonna bang it a little bit more and I'm probably gonna turn that around so that way maybe I'm like not banging evenly. So we're gonna bang it a little more yet. All right, so that's looking a lot better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with that. More will go through as I use it. Just, you know, it's the first time going through. All right, so we've got three designs on here. This one is really popular with you guys, even though we've never done a video on it. So now we're, we're introducing it to more of you. I think you all are just gonna fall in love with this stencil. So I'm gonna start with this leaf and little circle one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to line that up and they come with these registration marks. So they're meant to fit like right inside of probably a two inch border. And so I'm just lining that up with my edge here. You can use that to line it up with your piecing as well, but they make really, really great borders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I hold my fingertips down to kind of hold everything in place and just swipe across. And I usually do it a couple of times just to make sure that that chalk transfers. I'm using the blue today because it's gonna show up really well against this pink. And I peel it back and I can see that that is looking really, really good. You can also use those transfer marks to line that up so I can see where the plus was here and I can kind of pull that back and then it would just continue on going in that direction there. So I can put that and you can see how well it just picks up and goes on. So that's a really great way to do it with your border. When you're turning the border, what you can just do is you can just turn it like this. So you would just quilt right off the edge and then just turn it. And you could just follow along from there into this part and call it a day. So get creative with that, have some fun. There's some examples on the back too on how you can turn it. So lots of really great options there. All right, I'm gonna get my machiner's quilting gloves and then we're gonna quilt this baby. As always, there's a few things you wanna do to get your machine ready. You wanna lower your feed dogs, put your 
uh, free motion foot on, or if your machine feed dogs will not lower, you can also lower your stitch length to zero and that will effectively render them useless. I also like to wear my machiner's quilting gloves. It helps give me good grip and help me move the fabric easily. I can do a lot better quilting when I've got them on than when I've got them off. And also um, I want to tell you when I'm quilting for real, I quilt with my hands like this on the piece. This way, I'm gonna quilt with one down here so that way you guys can see what I'm doing on the side camera. So when you're doing it, you're gonna quilt whatever's gonna fit in between your hands when you've got them on your machine like this. So the first thing I always do is I bring my bobbin thread up to the top. It's not super essential for just practice pieces like this, but it's a really good habit to get into. All right, so just like everything, you're really gonna be quilting from point to point on this. So you're just gonna stitch in place a couple of times to get started. And then I'm just gonna follow along. Oh, one other thing I should mention, I always forget to tell you this. I always turn my speed down to the median level. It helps me control and get better even stitch lengths and smoother curves. So I don't feel like I have to rush. So I'm just following that first curve, heading into that point. And that point is a really good place to stop and get your hands repositioned. Ideally, I would have more fabric over here, but I'm trying to make the most of what I have here so we can get them all on this piece of fabric. All right, so when I come down to the center, I'm gonna follow in. And just to show you how easily this stuff comes off, just by going around, the majority of that is gone. And so I'm kind of eyeballing that just a little bit but I can definitely still tell where I'm supposed to be. All right, so now I wanna quilt that circle. And if you don't do a perfect circle, it's not like the berries are perfect in nature either. So you're perfectly fine, you're not a machine. The only way to get perfect circles is to buy a very expensive computerized quilting machine. And you don't have to do that. You can definitely have it be a little bit more organic. All right, so now I'm coming up to that point again. And I'm getting to the point where I'm having a little bit of trouble controlling it because I've gone a long way. My hand was really far up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause and reposition my hands so I can have a little bit better grip. It's great to stop at those points because when you're coming out of them, it's much less likely to look like you made a mistake than if you stopped in the middle of a curve and had to get going again and, and maybe got off a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna travel back down that point and then move on to my next bit. So I'm just gonna keep on following these lines, doing a nice little loop-de-loop -loop when we come to those berries. Doing my best to stay on the line, but you know, giving myself permission to get off a little bit because the lines are gonna go away and no one's gonna know that you were off a little bit. All right, so there we have number one. It's looking pretty good. And this is how easy it is to wipe that chalk off. It is gone. You cannot tell where I made any mistakes. It is just looking good. So you can see it works. It goes in either direction. We've got leaves going in both ways. And you can't tell where I was off just a little bit because you know what? It's an organic leaf and you're not a machine and it's perfectly fine. But you get a nice consistent border that's gonna fit really nicely in what you're planning. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is a little feather. All right, so same deal. I am just going to swipe across the center bit here, go a couple of times over it to make sure it transfers really well. And before I pull it off, I'm just gonna go ahead and peel it back and make sure it is looking good. It's always easier to reposition if you need a little bit extra if you haven't pulled the whole thing off. Looking pretty good. All right, we've got a really nice feather to follow. Now there's many different ways to do feathers. In this case, there's no overlap, so we don't have to worry about traveling or doing any bump back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to quilt around to the center and down, and then around to the center and back to my spine. The spine is the part going down the center. And then I'm just gonna repeat going up and down up and down. There are a lot of people who maybe they just do one side all at a time and they come back and they do the other side. If that's easier for you, go ahead and do it. But this is gonna be one of the most efficient ways because you're gonna be able to just go over 
and over and have one entire feather done and then you can come back and do the others. And especially with the chalk, which is gonna rub off as you're working with it, you don't wanna have to try and get it perfect the next time. So I'm just, just think of it as doing two halves of a heart and you're gonna end up with your fun little feather border there that will fit real nice inside of a two inch border. All right, so I'm just gonna follow that curve. Come around to my center spine, all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna come around the outside again. Following again until I hit some stitching line that's already there. All right, I've done that, so now I'm just gonna come back up and keep following along. I find it's easier for me to do the outside of the feather first and then come back in. But it is gonna be your personal preference and you might have to do it a couple of ways first until you decide which way works best for you. All right, so I've hit back to that spine and start coming around. And the feather is such a challenging design to really get and do well. And if you've watched some of my other feather ones, you know that I tried many, many different ways and methods to do feathers on my own. And then the first time I tried to do a feather using one of these stencils, I did it dang near perfect the very first time. And it's, I think the reason is, is because part of the challenge of feathers is where do I go next? How do I get them evenly spaced so that they look nice and not like a hot mess where one side looks good and the other side looks like, you know, you had a few too many glasses of wine before you started. And this way you just have to follow some lines and the lines go away so if they're not perfect in the end, it's okay, nobody's gonna know. All right, I need to reposition my hands. So I'm coming back to that spine and that's a good place to stop because again, I connected with something and I'm not trying to stop and make a nice smooth curve. I can just come out of it and continue on. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on going around like this until I finish quilting that section of border. All right, so this is what it looks like after you are done quilting. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe that off. You can see how easily that chalk comes off, anything that's left over. And we are left with a feather border that looks pretty stinking good. Um, and it looks like you can tell folks that you did it all yourself or you can let them in on your secret that you used the stencil. Uh, is it perfect? No. Are feathers perfect in nature? Absolutely not. Are any of your feathers ever gonna be perfect unless you buy a computerized quilting machine? No, they're not. So you're totally fine there. Don't have to worry about it. All right, so we're gonna do the last stencil, which is really cool. It's reversible. I mean, they're all reversible, but this one creates a cool secondary design. All right, so this is kind of a fun wave design that you could use in a two inch border. It fits real nicely in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer that. All right, that transferred pretty well. So now I can do something really cool because these are fully reversible. I can use those registration marks to line up everything. So I've got it nice and in line up top, or at the bottom there, and also here. And now I can also transfer on this side. to create a nice secondary design. So now it kind of looks like angel wings, double hearts, feathers, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a really cool design and you can definitely get a two for one on that one. It's really neat, really cool. All right, so for this one, it's just a lot of swoops. So you're gonna come in to here and that's a swoop. You can stop at that point if you need to reposition. Come all around, stop at the point come around to the point and then it just repeats. So you're gonna wanna do this in two passes because you know there's no overlap here. So I'm gonna quote one side and separately from the other side, but it's gonna create a really cool design when it's all done and it will make a great border. 
Now on this one, I'm gonna be extra careful to make sure that I lift and set my hands rather than drag them across. Cause you see that dragging my hands across will remove that chalk. And I wanna make sure that I don't have to remark the second side. But if you lift and set it down, then you're gonna have it intact long enough to get everything together. All right, so we're going to go ahead and quilt until we get into that center. You can pause there for a second, get a nice sharp point, follow around the curve. And then quilt back until you get to the point. Follow back around. And again, if you're not perfectly on, that's okay, as the lines are gonna go away. I'm gonna quilt into the point. All right, so now I'm gonna pause. This is a really good time to reposition your hands. You've kind of gone back and forth a little bit there. And now I'm just gonna pause and do it all again. All right, so I made it through that first part. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other half. The most of my chalk is, is off at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the stitching lines to make sure that I'm kind of hitting at the same point where my bits are coming together. a little bit different going through it a second time because even though I've already done this design, I'm doing it in the reverse at this point. So you might find that you are have an easier time doing one half and the other. It just means you need a little bit more practice. All right, so I'm coming into that center and I'm trying to come down to the point where my fabric line is even with the last one because at this point the chalk is mostly off because I pulled it over that line so that's what I'm using as my guide to try and keep it as even as possible. All right so let's wipe the rest of that chalk off and that turned out really really cool. So you can see how fun that would look as a border. Hit a Ran out of bobbin thread there. But I mean, that's just really cute. So if you did it as a wave on its own or as a double to make it kind of a feathery heart thing, that would also be really cool. So these are, you know, three to four border designs that you can easily do from the one stencil. It is really versatile. Like I said, it's one of our most popular ones. And so we decided to do a video to show more of you about it. Um, people really like it and it is really great for a lot of the things you're doing. We have done tons of videos on using stencils to develop free motion quilting. Of course, the idea is, is that you don't always have to use a stencil. Once you develop that muscle memory, you can adjust this to fit any size border you want. So once you feel like you have feathers down, you can do this in a three, four, five, six inch border. But this is a good way to get yourself started, get yourself comfortable with it, and just learn that muscle memory. Because especially with something like feathers or something really fancy like this, it just takes time to get your body used to making those movements. And I guarantee if you do this around an entire quilt and a two inch border, you will be able to do feathers by the time you are done with that freehand. Thanks so much for following along. As always, everything you need to make this is available at shop.quiltaddictsonless.com. We make it easy for you. Everything that is listed and used in this video tutorial is linked in the product description of the YouTube video. So if you're watching it there, that's an easy way to find it. Thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting.